everyone, welcome back to Subscriber Battle Saturdays. I know it's something I haven't done in a while, but I'm sorry. And so I've got here uh, a subscriber to the channel, Matthew. Uh, you can find him at, at Twitter. You know, his handle is at MattyB410. So that's at Matty, the letter B, 410. If you want to follow him, uh, check out what he's got going on. Uh, he challenged me to a battle, and so I'm going to battle him. Um, I didn't really have time to come up with a new team yet for ladder up, or just in general. So I'm going to be using the team that I used at the New Jersey Midseason Showdown, which is a lot of fun. I'm very excited about it. Hopefully, this will be uh, a good time. This, this is good music. We're just going to hop into it. And uh, Maddie uh, it told me, Matt, I'm just calling him Matthew. Matt, Matthew. Call him Matt. Call him Matt. Matt told me that he's somewhat new to the game. Oh no, my my capture is not working. Hold on a second. Oh god. Okay. Yeah, my capture is not working. So you're gonna hear noise cut out for a second. Oh no. All right, live editing. Here we go. Oh boy. Um, this is a problem. Oh, this is he. Oof. He's got a Marowak, and I haven't seen a Marowak in a while. Marowak's a problem for my <laughs> drift blim. Doesn't have a trick room setter, so I think here. I'm pretty good to... Arcanine's good, Garchomp's good. Uh, I'm a little worried about the Tapu Lele. See, the thing I don't like about Tapu Fenny is that it's not that good in terms of its actual damage output. It's fairly bulky, and it, it's nice. It helps set up the uh, the Unburden, and the, the Misty Terrain allows you to swagger your partner and get free attack boost. But other than that, it doesn't really do a whole lot, and that's kind of why I don't like it that much. Swagger play is nice. Um, I, I'm The thing is, it's either I want Metagross or I want Garchomp. And I think I want Metagross, because Metagross... Uh, I think I want Garchomp, because Metagross is really only good against the, uh, the Tapu Lele. So I'm going to go with this. He's taking his time to figure things out. Coming down on the wire. Two seconds left. All right, so here we go. Um, I haven't played a whole lot of Pokemon recently um, since the, the mid-season. I, mean, I, I, did, I did stream for a couple hours the other night, and that was a lot of fun. But I haven't like played seriously. I've been trying to build a team for a while now that it's just not working. It's going to be fun, but it's I haven't I haven't ironed out the kinks yet, and I don't want to bring it to the channel if it's not good. So I'm playing, I'm playing with this now. And Driftblim is such a cool Pokemon, I honestly don't mind playing this team for a little bit longer. Muck Tapu Koko. Okay, so... Ooh, boy, that's a, that's a rough lead for me, isn't it? What I can actually do here... What I'm going to do here... This might be predictable. I'm going to set up a Tailwind. And then I'm going to go into my Garchomp. Because Muck... Smuck's knockoff isn't going to do too much to Driftblim now that I've gotten the... My, my item's already gone. Um, a Thunderbolt at plus one in not Electric Terrain is not going to do that much. I think it's more important here that I Tailwind. So this is a play that I've done on the channel in different videos, because I did this a couple times at the Midseason Showdown, uh, where I just I immediately switch into Garchomp and Tailwind, and then I can Side Swagger and Earthquake. So, okay, so no protects, so the worst, worst case here would be, like, a Dazzling Gleam knockoff into Garchomp. Okay, that's... Is that... Oh my god, is that a crit? It just does a ton of damage. Oh, I was not expecting that at all. Is that choice... That... That... That makes me think that's choice specs. That makes me think that's choice specs. Did a lot of damage. Is that a plus one defense? That was not an electric terrain. Normally, not not an electric terrain. Those thunderbolts at life orb do barely over half, maybe. So that makes me think that he's locked in there. In which case, I know I know my life orb flare bits will take it out. I'm worried about a Celestino switching. I could sword dance here, which might actually be the way to go. Because the muck might protect. If it does protect, a sword stance is better. He's gotta be worried about. Gotta be worried about. 
that Z move. So maybe this is a little risky. I don't know. This is kind of risky. I'm getting a little greedy here, I suppose. But what's the fun in, in not just having a little bit of fun, you know? It's because Swords Dance is fun. Okay, Muff, Muff does protect, so I'm happy that I didn't waste my Z move. So, yeah, judging by that damage, I don't think that Tapu Koko can take this Life Orb Flare Blitz. I mean, it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. Yeah. I every every single Celesteela and Tapu Koko I played at the midseason showdown got Oko'd by by Flare Blitz off of Arcanine. Um, as long as I wasn't intimidated, they all went down. I played several relaxed or bo or like bold or impish natured Celesteela that went down to that. So yeah, this is this is very simple. There's no need to make a prediction here. The Celesteela could come in. I have two turns of Tailwind left, so if Sail Steel does come in, I'll be alright. I'm just gonna Flare Blitz there. I'm gonna Z move into the muck. No reason not to. It could switch out into Sail Steel, and that would be a little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. The Cartana, I suppose, is the bigger problem, so I'd like to target that down. And if the Cartana, you know, protects this turn, because he doesn't switch out. Let's say, so the Cortana, if it wasn't Assault Vest and it protected this turn, I would just Rock Slide next turn and, uh, and Flare Blitz into that slot. That would be my play. That's a pretty neutral play. It either takes out a Celesteela that comes in, does a lot of damage to a possible Marowak, would Oko a Lele, would Oko the Cortana. So that, that's, what that, that's what I would do in that situation. That crit, believe me, that crit didn't matter. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was a plus two. Uh, oh god, Tectonic Rage. Okay, so it's not Focus Sash. Which means it's probably... It's probably Assault Vest. Could be something crazy like Scope Lens. I, you know, I would have been able to tell based off of how much health I just lost actually in Recoil. But I wasn't paying attention. So, yeah, you can tell because you, you do a third of the... You get the recoil that happens to you is a third of what normally happens. So that would tell you what the um, what their HP is, and I'd be able to tell what the item is, but I didn't see. So I'm sorry. I have, a, I have another turn to tail them, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, so even if that's Choice Scarf lately, I think I'll be okay. And I want to double attack here in case they protect. In case they um, they protect. Oh, Rock Slide. Rock Slide! Actually, if it is Scarf Leather, that could be bad. It's got a bit of bulk to it. It's got a bit of a bit of, bit of, bit of bulk to it. So that was a fun game one. Um, and again, I would like to reiterate that um, Matt has been working a long time on getting his team together. Uh, so, you know, he's fairly new to the game. I don't think the team is bad. I think it's a good team composition. Um, I wonder if you can hear my foot massager in the background. Um, yeah, so the thing is, against a team like mine, when you see, this is in general, when you see Driftblim, or you see something weird like that, you see a Driftblim, or you see a whatever, um, you have to expect that it's going to do so It's there for a reason. Like, I wouldn't just throw a Driftblim on the team for no reason. Like, if I put a... I put a Jolteon on the team. I wouldn't just put it there for no reason. Like, or like when I played Mischievous, it was there for a reason. Like, it, it hard countered Snorlax. You know, can't hit with normal moves. It's got Levitate, so high horsepower does nothing. And you resist. There goes my massage. So you resist uh, the heavy slam, so it really can't do anything to you. So when you see Driftblim, you gotta expect. Okay, it's there to set up Tailwind. So if my best option against you, if you don't have Trick Room, I'm going to bring Tailwind, which means I'm probably going to lead. Uh, Driftblim, Tapu, Finny. So you, you, you play against that, which is why actually his lead there was very good. The lead, uh, Tapu, Coco, Muck, was a good lead. It wasn't bad. Um, I could this time go with um, like something different. But I like being able to outspeed his Pokemon. That's the best thing for me. Arcanine does a great job here. It really does. Because, let's see, Arcanine can Oko one, two, three of its things easily. 
can probably Oko that Tapu Lele. And with some chip can can knock out the uh, the muck. Pretty easily, pretty handily. Definitely gonna still bring Arcanine. See, I didn't feel any pressure that game at all. So here's the thing. Here's best of three knowledge for you. If you did something in game one and you won, unless it's like a gimmick or something, if they just like didn't have a good answer for what you what you did and you look at the team and you don't see a good answer for it, do the same thing. You know, like bring the same Pokemon, play the same way, because it's not up to you to try and figure out how they're going to beat you. It's up to you to just beat them again. And if they can't, if they didn't figure out a good way in game one, and they, you got to, they have, they have, you know, one more game to try and figure out a game plan. So, so it, the pressure's on them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to do the exact same thing. And you'll notice, I don't, I'm not bringing Tapu Koko, because I don't really think it does anything, especially not against the Marowak. Um, so the biggest thing about Tapu Koko on this team, it's Focus Sash with Taunt, because this team struggles a bit against Trick Room. Against Super Hard Trick Room, where they've got a Hariyama and Fake Out uh, lead, this team struggles a bit. Like, this team against Gavin Michaels' team from uh, from uh, Anaheim would not do so well, I don't think. Unless you're, like, super, super good and you pre can predict every single turn correctly. Maybe, but but in my hands, <laughs> probably wouldn't do so well. Um, uh, yeah, So, it, but if it's just general Trick Room, you know, the Taunt's super helpful get into a bit of mind games with like 50-50s and such. You know, like, are they going to trick room or are they just going to ice beam or thunderbolt, whatever. But you don't have to, it's not that, it's not that bad. Porygon 2 is just an, an annoying Pokemon to deal with in general. Tapu Lele Kartana. We're going to find out, no, we're not going to find out if this is Scarf or not. Even if it is Scarf, I should be able to get a tail. There's nothing he can do to stop me from getting a tail in, unless it's Scarf Taunt. Ooh, that, that, that would be, that'd be tricky if it was Scarf Taunt, because this Driplum is EV to outspeed Feramosa, like positive speed nature Feramosa, and a lot of Tapu Lele are EV to outspeed that, so it could be a speed tie, who knows, or it could just be, you know, timid 252 speed, in which case, probably going to get outsped here. But you know, it is great, though, uh, me going into Arcanine. Intimidate the Kartana, Tapu Lele. If it doesn't target down Driftlim, I mean, it could... A double target into the Tapu Finny wouldn't be bad. Like a Psychic. But if that happens, I can just go into Garchomp and Earthquake everything, and I'm not too threatened. So, even if Arcanine goes down here, as long as I get a Tailwind, I should be alright. This puts me in a pretty good position. This will tell me... This will tell me the speed on the, 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 uh, the Tapu Lele as well. If it goes first, it's, it's Choice Scarf. It is Choice Scarf! Okay. So my suspicion was correct. And we know that in Tailwind I'm going to outspeed that. Night Slash. So that is Assault Vest. That is a lot of damage. Intimidated. Oh my god. Oh, it's not. It's Life Orb. Let's say that does a lot of damage for an Assault Vest, but that is a Life Orb Cartana. So here's the thing. Could disable the Cartana. I'd rather probably just. I'm just gonna swagger into the. Uh, so the Cartana's gotta be threatened. So I'm gonna swagger into my Arcanine. I'm going to Flare Blitz the crap out of this Tapu Lele. Withdraw Cartana into who? Okay, that's fine. That, I mean, that wouldn't have taken that very well either. But I hit the swagger, which is nice. So this Tapu Lele is going down. <laughs> This top of Lele is not going to survive this turn. Uh, see, this is the fun thing about Driftlim, is that it's got so, so many great support moves, and it being faster than everything is just super, super clutch. So you can run Shadow Ball, with, like offensive special type attacker, with, um, you know, Will-O-Wisp, and like, it even gets Rain Dance. Shoma, Shoma Hanami uh, used Rain Dance on the team he used to win the Geico Invitational. That was super cool. So this here is an okay play, because now I can't swagger myself. So that's not bad. Unfortunately, I can also swagger them. So the question is, the Celesteel is the bigger threat here. So it doesn't protect, am I worried about it? 
Is Tapu Fini useful here, late game? Against the Cartana, not really. Tapu Fini's not really useful at all. So I'm actually gonna... What I wanna do... Hmm. Yeah. See, Driftling doesn't do a whole lot here. In case it's Focus Sash Tapu Coco, I'm gonna actually go and just... I'm gonna attack the Tapu Coco. I don't have a good... I'm just this is 50. I think Cell Steel protects. It's a this is a 50-50, but I think the Cell Steel protects. It does not. So, okay, so now we're in a bit of a pickle. Because I don't have a good way to touch the Cell Steel, actually. I might have just kinda boned myself on that one. And the life orb is gonna knock me out. Ooh, that's not good. It's not good at all. Leech Seed. Okay. So what's the last Pokemon? Cell Steel is going to be an issue. This is going to be a big issue, actually. Yeah, Arcanine was very important there. I just gave it up for free. Okay, um... So, the Cell Steel, I can't let it set up a Leech Seed. So what I'm going to do... I've got, what, one turn of Tailwind left? Right? Do I want to double into Cartana, or do I want to... go after the Cell Steel? Go after the Celesteela. And I'm actually going to, um. Actually, going to take Tonic Rage to Cartana, because I think it'll do, a, it'll do a nice amount of damage, and I need to get some damage on it either way. Okay, so he doesn't protect it. So this, this Tectonic Rage should do a good amount of damage. I mean, based off of how much damage it's the Cartana's Night Slash did to my Driftlin at minus one. I think, I mean, I know Cartana's got a sky-high attack stat, but this should still do a nice amount of damage. I'm going to struggle against the Celesteela. I think my my only option here is knock out the Cartana and then get the plus six and rock slide. That's, like, the best thing I could do here. Because now that it can't reach seed, I'm in a decent position. That is huge. Getting rid of Cartana there was huge, because I, I should not have given up Arcanine so easily. Heavy Slam. Let's get, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, I cannot let that Celesteela knock out Driftlim so easily. Leech Sheet is disabled. My Tailwind petered up. That's okay. I'm going to be faster than the Celesteela anyways. So that's not bad. And I'm going to Swords Dance here. Because he, he probably just heavy slams into Driftblim. And, you know, this, this is the bold Tapu Fini, so it'll take it okay. I just, I don't want him to... The heavy slams Garchomp, it's not the worst. I just, I can't let him get a beast boost. Especially if it's, like, defense. Okay, good. That's a protect. That's fine. So this Swords Dance is very good for us. And this is the problem. With a stally Pokemon like Celesteela, if you're, like, you're... This is one of the reasons why I, like, I really like Swords Dance Garchomp. Because even though you can't Oko it, if it's just going to sit there and try and protect in front of you, you can very easily just set up right in its face. Especially since it can't leech seed. No, 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 not Earthquake. <laughs> Ooh, that was almost terrible. <laughs> that was almost really bad. <laughs> so we have, we have foot, oh, never mind. We don't have flinch chances because we miss. And then we're gonna start muddy watering and between rock slide and possible muddy water actually drops, this is gonna be good. Heavy slam into top of Finny. That is a good play, that's a good play. That's a great play. So the moment Leech Seed comes back, we're, we're, we are in trouble. We are in trouble. I'm gonna call mine again. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna protect my Garchomp here. Just cause that gives my Top of Finny another turn to call mine. If he doesn't attack into Garchomp, that's fine. Um, if he does, this is a great turn. 
But yeah, so now plus two. Plus two Muddy Waters are going to do a lot of damage. Okay, that's a that's a good play right there. Still, I take that okay. If I if I had only just hit that um that first rock slide, we would have been in a good position. Because single target rock slide at plus two is gonna do a nice chunk to sell Steela. Okay, so now we have a problem. Muddy water. And we're gonna rock slide. So a protect here would actually be a good play. No protect. We hit the rock slides. So we have flinch chances. Ooh, that's nice. We hit the muddy water. So how much does this do? That's it. That's, that's there's the there's the real kicker. Nice, nice, and the flinch. That's 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 gorgeous. That is gorgeous. The thing is though, like, it's gonna if it protects. I don't think a rock slide would knock it out, but there's no reason to like try and set up right now. We just want it, even if it protects, you know, we hit one attack, one of our two inaccurate attacks, we should be all right. So I expect to protect, no protect. Good, okay, good. Good game to Matt. Now, here's what I want to point out. Matt adjusted very well in that second game. That, those were good adjustments to make. If I hadn't been prepared for the choice scarf for Tapu Lele, which I was considering in, after the first game, that could have gone very badly for me. But he made good adjustments. Protected when he needed to, didn't protect when when he shouldn't have. Targeted like he, he didn't. I don't think he targeted into a single protect that entire time. So that was actually pretty good. Good games to you, Matt. A lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And to everyone else, if you want to be a part of Subscriber Battle Saturdays, be sure to follow me on Twitter and request a battle. You know, you can you can slide into my DMs and just be like, Yo, I want I'm trying to battle. I want to I want to kick your kick your ass on on, on YouTube because I don't filter these out like. Like, if, if someone comes on here and wrecks me, I will gladly put it on YouTube. Please. So, that's it today, guys. Um, make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. And I hope to see you back next time for some more Subscriber Battle Saturdays.